Chapter 22. The perfection of style is to be clear without being mean. The clearest style is that which uses only current or proper words. At the same time it is mean. Witness the poetry of Cleophon and of Sthenelus. That diction, on the other hand, is lofty and raised above the commonplace which employs unusual words. By unusual, I mean strange or rare. Words, metaphorical, lengthened, anything, in short, that differs from the normal idiom. Yet a style wholly composed of such words is either a riddle or a jargon. A riddle, if it consists of metaphors. A jargon, if it consists of strange or rare words. For the essence of a riddle is to express true facts under impossible combinations. Now this cannot be done by any arrangement of ordinary words, but by the use of metaphor it can. Such is the riddle. A man I saw who on another man had glued the bronze by aid of fire, and others of the same kind. A diction that is made up of strange or rare terms is a jargon. A certain infusion, therefore, of these elements is necessary to style, for the strange or rare word, the metaphorical, the ornamental, and the other kinds above mentioned, will raise it above the commonplace and mean, while the use of proper words will make it perspicuous. But nothing contributes more to produce a clearness of diction that is remote from commonness than the lengthening, contraction, and alteration of words. For by deviating in exceptional cases from the normal idiom, the language will gain distinction, while, at the same time, the partial conformity with usage will give perspicuity. The critics, therefore, are in error who censure these licenses of speech and hold the author up to ridicule. Thus Euclides, the elder, declared that it would be an easy matter to be a poet if you might lengthen syllables at will. He caricatured the practice in the very form of his diction, as in the verse. Epsilon pi iota chi alpha rho eta nu slash epsilon iota delta omicron nu slash mu alpha rho alpha theta omega nu alpha delta epsilon slash beta alpha delta iota zeta omicron nu tau alpha or omicron upsilon kappa slash alpha nu slash gamma slash epsilon rho alpha mu epsilon nu omicron sigma slash tau omicron nu slash epsilon kappa epsilon iota nu omicron upsilon slash epsilon lambda lambda epsilon beta omicron rho omicron nu. To employ such license at all obtrusively is, no doubt, grotesque, but in any mode of poetic diction there must be moderation. Even metaphors, strange or rare, words, or any similar forms of speech, would produce the like effect if used without propriety and with the express purpose of being ludicrous. How great a difference is made by the appropriate use of lengthening may be seen in epic poetry by the insertion of ordinary forms in the verse. So, again, if we take a strange or rare word, a metaphor, or any similar mode of expression, and replace it by the current or proper term, the truth of our observation will be manifest. For example, Aeschylus and Euripides each composed the same iambic line. But the alteration of a single word by Euripides, who employed the rarer term instead of the ordinary one, makes one verse appear beautiful and the other trivial. Aeschylus in his Philoctetes says, Phi alpha gamma epsilon delta alpha iota nu alpha slash delta slash eta slash mu omicron upsilon slash sigma alpha rho kappa alpha sigma slash epsilon rho theta iota epsilon iota slash pi omicron delta omicron sigma. Euripides substitutes put heta omicron iota nu alpha tau alpha iota feasts on for epsilon sigma heta iota epsilon iota feeds on. Again in the line nu upsilon nu delta epsilon mu epsilon omega nu omikron lambda iota gamma iota gamma upsilon sigma tau epsilon u kappa alpha iota omikron upsilon tau iota delta alpha nu omikron sigma kappa alpha iota alpha epsilon iota kappa eta sigma the difference will be e felt if we substitute the common words nu upsilon nu delta epsilon umu epsilon omega nu umu iota kappa rho omikron sigma tau epsilon kappa alpha iota alpha rho theta epsilon nu iota kappa Omikron sigma kappa alpha iota alpha epsilon iota delta gamma sigma. OR, if for the line, 
Delta Iota Firo Omikronnu Alpha Epsilon Iota Kappa Epsilon Lambda Iota Omikronnu Kappa Alpha Tau Alpha Theta Epsilon Iota Sigma Omikron Lambda Iota Gamma Etanu Tau Epsilon Tau Rho Alpha Pi Epsilon Iota Sigma Omikron Lambda Iota Gamma Etanu Tau Epsilon Tau Rho Alpha Pi Epsilon Zeta Alpha Nu Viride Delta Iota Firo Omikron Nu Mu Omikron Chit Heta Etaro Omikron Nu Kappa Alpha Tau Alpha Heta Epsilon Iota Sigma Mu Iota Kappa Rho Alpha Nu. Tau Epsilon Tau Rho Alpha Pi Epsilon Zeta Alpha Nu. Or, for, eta Iota Omikron Nu Epsilon Sigma Barra Beta Omikron Omikron Omega Rho Iota Nu. Eta Iota Omikron Nu Epsilon Sigma Kappa Rho Alpha Zeta Omikron Epsilon Rho Iota Nu. Again, Arafraids ridiculed the tragedians for using phrases which no one would employ in ordinary speech. For example, Delta Omega Mu Alpha Tau Omega Nu Slash Alpha Pi Omicron instead of Alpha Pi Omicron Slash Delta Omega Mu Alpha Tau Omega Nu Rho Epsilon Theta Epsilon Nu Epsilon Gamma Omega Slash Delta Epsilon Slash Nu Iota Nu Alpha Chi Iota Lambda Lambda Epsilon Omega Sigma Slash Pi Epsilon Rho Iota instead of Pi Epsilon Rho Iota Slash Alpha Chi Iota Lambda Lambda Epsilon Omega Sigma and the like. It is precisely because such phrases are not part of the current idiom that they give distinction to the style. This, however, he failed to see. It is a great matter to observe propriety in these several modes of expression, as also in compound words, strange or rare, words, and so forth. But the greatest thing by far is to have a command of metaphor. This alone cannot be imparted by another. It is the mark of genius, for to make good metaphors implies an eye for resemblances. Of the various kinds of words, the compound are best adapted to dithyrams, rare words to heroic poetry, metaphors to iambic. In heroic poetry, indeed, all these varieties are serviceable. But in iambic verse, which reproduces, as far as may be, familiar speech, the most appropriate words are those which are found even in prose. These are the current or proper, the metaphorical, the ornamental. Concerning tragedy and imitation by means of action this may suffice. Summary and Reflection for Chapter 22 Barrage of Greek Letters Aside, in The Poetics, Section 22, Aristotle delves into the nuances of linguistic expression, particularly focusing on the perfection of style and tragedy. He contends that the perfection lies in achieving clarity without descending into mediocrity. Aristotle discerns two extremes in style. The clearest style, which employs only current or proper words, can be mean, while a lofty style, raised above the commonplace, uses unusual or metaphorical words. Aristotle acknowledges the necessity of infusing elements like strange words, metaphors, and ornamental language into style to elevate it above the ordinary. He criticizes, however, an excessive use of such elements, warning against creating either a riddle or a jargon. The former involves expressing true facts under impossible combinations, often achieved through metaphors, while the latter results from a style dominated by strange or rare words. The philosopher defends the use of lengthening, contraction, and alteration of words as powerful tools for achieving clarity that is both distinct and remote from commonness. He rebukes critics who ridicule these linguistic liberties, emphasizing the importance of moderation in their application. Aristotle illustrates the impact of lengthening with examples, showcasing how it can elevate a verse when used appropriately. In addition, Aristotle emphasizes the significance of metaphor, considering it the greatest linguistic achievement that distinguishes genius. Metaphors, according to Aristotle, cannot be taught. They are born from an innate ability to perceive resemblances. Practical Exercises Writers Balance metaphor usage, craft a short story that strategically employs metaphors to enhance the narrative without overshadowing clarity. For example, use metaphors to symbolize emotional states or character development. Revise with lengthening. Take a segment of a story and experiment with lengthening, contraction, or alteration of words to observe the impact on style and clarity. Composers. Musical metaphorical composition. Compose a musical piece where certain musical elements metaphorically represent narrative themes or character emotions, maintaining a balance between clarity and artistic expression. 
Harmony and lengthen melody. Create a melody with subtle lengthening or alteration, testing how these musical liberties can add distinction without compromising the piece's memorability. Dancers. Choreography as metaphor. Choreograph a dance that metaphorically conveys a story or emotional journey, utilizing movements as metaphors to enhance expression without sacrificing clarity. Expressive dance with lengthening. Explore dance movements that involve lengthening or contraction, showcasing how these variations can add a layer of sophistication to the choreography. Actors. Scene with strategic metaphors. Perform a scene with carefully selected metaphors that enhance the emotional depth and thematic elements of the narrative without making the dialogue obscure. Monologue with linguistic liberties. Act out a monologue where the character employs lengthening, contraction, or alteration of words, demonstrating how such linguistic liberties can bring distinctiveness to the performance without sacrificing clarity. These exercises encourage contemporary artists to engage with Aristotle's insights on style, striking a balance between clarity and artistic expression by incorporating metaphors and measured linguistic liberties.